Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black sacrifice deck. It's an aggressive creature deck featuring lots of flying creatures and also has lots of neat synergies. So let's dive right into it here with our one drops where we have a copy of Vampiric Rites, an enchantment for single black and for one and a black we can sacrifice a creature to gain a life and draw a card. So one of the many ways in this deck to sacrifice our own creatures to gain incremental advantages. So in the late game when our opponents try to kill all our creatures we can just sacrifice them to draw some cards. And moving on we have a copy of Bone Splinters. So as an additional cost we also have to sacrifice a creature but then we get to destroy any target creature we want. We don't want to have too many of these effects because of course we still want to have some creatures in play to attack and deal some damage but it's nice to have access to a card that for one mana can kill any creature. Then we get to our two drops where we have Perilous Mirror. This is a creature that we don't mind sacrificing as when he dies we get to deal two damage to target creature or player. And of course he can also take down three toughness creatures when they attack on the ground since he can block and then deal two damage to them to finish them off. So a good ground blocker while we attack in the air. Then we also have a few copies of Welkin Turn, another aggressive creature that can deal some damage in the air. And then when we don't need the Welkin Turn anymore we can always sacrifice it to one of our many effects. We also have the Spoiler of Souls which has some neat synergies with creatures in the graveyard. It's a 3-1 that cannot block so we will be attacking most of the time. But then for double black and exiling two creature cards from our graveyard we can return the despoiler from the graveyard to the battlefield so we can attack once again or can get sacrificed to our effects. We also have a carrier thrall which is a 2-1 for 2 mana but when he dies we get to put an Eldrazi Scion creature token into play which has the effect of sacrificing him to uh, gain one colorless mana to our mana pool. So another creature that we don't mind sacrificing as we'll get a second creature out of it which we can then sacrifice at any point to add one colorless mana or we can just sacrifice a token to our other effects. We also have a copy of Shadows of the Past which is another enchantment that synergizes nicely with having lots of creatures die because whenever a creature dies we get to scry one to dig a bit deeper into our library. And then later in the game for four and a black we can make our opponent lose two life and gain two life but we can only activate this if there are four or more creature cards in the graveyard. Then we also have Eldrazi Sky Spawner, which is another exciting addition for this deck. It's a 2-1 flyer for 3 mana, which is already decent, but he also comes with a 1-1 Eldrazi Scion creature token when he enters the battlefield, so we get 3 power and 2 toughness for 3 mana, two of which are flying, and then the Scion token we can sacrifice to add a mana or sacrifice to our other effects. So that's quite nice, so we can keep attacking in the air while we have lots of blockers on the ground. We also have a copy of Liliana Heretical Healer, which synergizes very nicely with all our sacrifice effects, as she'll transform quite easily in this deck. And then she becomes the Defiant Necromancer, which can make everyone discard, or can return creature cards from our graveyard into play. So quite nice in this deck. Then we have a Graveblade Marauder, which is a 1 for Death Touch, so can trade with very large creatures. And when he deals combat damage to a player, that player loses life equal to the number of creature cards in our graveyard. So also synergizes with having lots of creatures in a graveyard, which we don't mind doing. Then we have Flashbag Marauder, which is the staple in all the sacrifice decks, since when he enters the battlefield each player sacrifices a creature, and we have lots of expendable creatures to sacrifice, and it's also a zombie, so we can get it back with Cruel Revival. And our next card is also a zombie we can get back with Cruel Revival, that's Nantuka Husk, also another way to sacrifice our own creatures, which will give him plus two plus two until end of turn, which makes combat quite horrible for the opponent, since we can just sacrifice our expendable creatures to grow the Nantuka Husk if they block him, and can also attack for quite a bit of damage out of nowhere if they uh, don't respect him. And he also synergizes very nicely with our next card, which is Whirler Rogue, 
which is a 2-2 that comes into play with two colorless flying thopter tokens and then we can tap two artifacts we control to make a creature unblockable. Our next card is probably the most synergistic card in the entire deck, a 4-3 flyer for 4 mana which is already decent, but at the beginning of our upkeep we have to sacrifice a creature which is kind of a bummer, but then when you read the next part, whenever we sacrifice a creature we get to draw a card, so basically every turn we get to draw two cards instead of just one, and whenever we sacrifice a creature outside of our upkeep we also get to draw a card, so this synergizes very nicely with our Cyan tokens, because if we sacrifice them at any point we also get to draw a card, so not only does this kill the opponent quite quickly, it also draws us a lot of cards. We also have two copies of Priest of the Blood Rite, another creature that comes into play with another creature, in this case a 5-5 Demon with Flying, which is quite strong. Uh, the Priest has a downside, because at the beginning of our upkeep we have to lose two life, but of course we can just sacrifice the Priest and keep the Demon around, which is neat. And then we have Crew Revival, which can destroy a non-zombie creature at instant speed, but also returns a zombie from our graveyard to our hand if we want to, so we can get back the Flashbag Marauder and Nantuka Husk. And finally we also have Obnixilus, which is another way to destroy creatures, or draw cards if we don't need to destroy anything, and his ultimate can also slowly win the game. Let's take a look at our mana base, where we have 6 islands, 8 swamps, then 2 of the new dual land Sunken Hollow, to Drowned Catacomb, then one copy of Rogue's Passage to make our Nantuko Husk unblockable, and then four copies of Evolving Wilds over the Guild Gate because we want to have lots of basics for our Sunken Hollow to come into play untapped. And let's take a look at our curve, and now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look at our opener which has some expensive cards, but we do have double Evolving Wilds to get double black, so we can for sure play one of our three drops on three. So I think we can keep... If we draw any two drop we can play it. Starting off with Evolving Wilds, which will get a Swamp. We can wait until the opponent's end step to hide some information, but I just want to make sure I don't forget. So next turn most likely just gonna play the other Evolving Wilds, getting another Swamp. So then we have the choice of Liliana or Sky Spawner. Liliana does not transform with tokens dying, but I'm sure we can find a way to sacrifice our own creatures. Alright, perfect. Um, I think I'll play the Welkin turn here. And then if we do draw another basic next turn, we can just play Sky Spawner or Liliana if it's a Swamp. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Opponent on Forest, so Flyers are pretty good against um, the ground blockers that most green decks play. And if your opponent is on some sort of ramp deck, it's good to get in some damage early. Alright, Mountain Go. And we draw a Catacomb, sweet. So I think we start by attacking here. See if our opponent has a response. And then we can decide if we want to play Sky Spawner or Liliana. And let's see here. Sky Spawner would allow us to play the Abomination next turn no matter what. So I kind of like that idea. Yeah, let's go for it. It's also nicer to play Liliana if we know we can transform it right away, so it doesn't get killed by a removal spell. And this also puts the most pressure on our opponent. Did not have any removal spell end of turn, which is good for us. Twin Bolt could hurt us quite a bit here, but our opponent clearly didn't have it. Instead it plays a Foundry, and no play, alright. So there's a Husk, which is nice, as we could play it and then uh, play Liana to transform Liliana right away. 
That being said, I think we start by attacking for 5 here. And then play something like an Abomination post-combat. Attacking first makes sure that the Scion still gets in for the damage. So if we want to play around a card like Radiant Flames, we could just play Nantuko Husk here. And then if our opponent does have Radiant Flames, we can just sacrifice a bunch of creatures to save the Nantuko Husk. But I don't think our opponent has Radiant Flames, otherwise he probably would have just cast it last turn. So I think we just run out the Abomination here, which puts the most pressure on our opponent right away. Play Evolving Wilds, pause a turn. And this Evolving Wilds can just search up whatever basic we want. It doesn't really matter at this point. Alright, another colorless land for the opponent. So cannot play something like Monvuli Acid Moss, which is a reason to wait until the end step for the Evolving Wilds. So in case our opponent kills our islands or Catacomb, we know we can search up another island, so we still have double blue. But we also want double black still for the cards in hand, so grabbing a swamp either way makes sense. Opponent played the Zendikar Incarnate, which is only a 4-4 at this point. We have to sacrifice one of our creatures to the Abomination. I'll just sacrifice our worst creature, so we also get to draw an extra card. Sweet. So now we have lots of options available. We can uh, play up Nixilus and just kill the Incarnate, which is not bad, but I kind of want to have more creatures in play so that we can sacrifice them to the Abomination next turn. So I think we play Perilous Mirror, then the question is do we play Liliana or Nantuko Husk here? And I think we play the Husk since I don't want to expose Liliana and by playing Husk first we can protect Liliana next turn. Um, so let's start by attacking for 6 in the air. And then play Perilous Mirror. I think uh, playing the Husk is a little safer here. And this could also discourage your opponent from attacking. But if he doesn't answer our flyers, he's just going to be dead next turn to 2 damage from Perilous Mirror and 6 in the air. And this way, if our opponent even has a sweeper, we can just sacrifice all our creatures to Nantukas, can draw a million cards thanks to the Abomination. Which is quite nice. So no attacks from the opponent. Reclamation Sage is actually not that bad. So we want to sacrifice our mirror in response, so we get to draw a card from the Abomination and then I guess we'll deal 2 damage to our opponent, so he's dead next turn. Alright. Husk is a 4-4. Four, four. And... Elvish Visionary is fine. So now we can just sacrifice our Husk to the Abomination. Since our opponent stepped out. Otherwise we could have played it a little safer. Maybe sacrifice a Sky Spawner, set up Liliana, but yeah, these are all perfect creatures to sacrifice to the Abomination, but it's not gonna be in needed, as we can just attack. Alright, sweet, let's move on to the next one. Okay, let's take a look at our opening hand, which doesn't look bad. It's a little awkward that we have two Sunken Hollows and only one basic, but I think think we can keep. So it's actually an interesting decision what land we lead with. Uh, if we go Sunken Hollow, next turn we can for sure play Island into Perilous Mirror. Yeah, I think we uh, lead with the tapped Sunken Hollow. If we do draw Basic, we just have another Basic, which is good. So we can just go Basic, Basic and then play our second Sunken Hollow. And if we don't, at least we get to play Perilous Mirror next turn. Opponent leads with a Sludge Crawler. Alright, uh, Welcome Turn is interesting. If we play Perilous Mirror, opponent is just gonna attack. 
we trade and deal two damage to our opponent, which, I mean, is not bad, but I think we can get more value out of the Perilous Mirror. Uh, that being said, we might want to be worried about the ingest, so playing the mirror cuts off the ingest, at least for now. While if we play Welcome Turn, we get some uh, damage going, and then maybe we get more value out of the Perilous Mirror. So yeah, I think we can go with the Welcome Turn here. Don't mind taking one here if our opponent pumps it, that's also fine. And hopefully the one in chest won't punish us too hard here. But we'll find out. Opponent could be mono black. Alright, red black instead. So it looks to be a more aggressive deck. So we'll take one since Welcome Turn can't block the crawler. Right, opponent has a 2-drop he wants to play here. It's a slide runner, alright. Pretty aggressive, but at least now our Perilous Mirror looks pretty good. We draw a Carrier Thrall. So... We can only play a 2-drop here. And I think it's just gonna be the Perilous Mirror. We could play the Thrall. Um, but Perilous Mirror seems better. So let's hit for two. So our opponent next turn likely has a land to make this a 3-2. Attacks. Hmm, actually this is interesting. So if we play Perilous Mirror, our opponent just plays a land, attacks with both. So we actually only get to kill the Slide Runner. While if we play the Thrall, we would also get a Scion token, so we can play Whirler Rogue next turn. I don't mind forcing our opponent to pump the Crawler next turn, as that makes him spend 2 mana, so yeah, I think I play the Peril Smear here. We still have a decent play next turn in Flashback Marauder, or we can just play the Thrall next turn. So let's see if our opponent has a land for the Slide Runner. He does. So if he attacks with both, we're clearly blocking the Crawler. If he just attacks with the Slide Runner, that's also interesting. But at that point, I think we just trade. So just attacks with the Slide Runner. Actually, we could just take it here and then play Flashback. Sacrificing the mirror, which actually sounds better. So opponent just attacks for three here. And the follow-up is a vile aggregate. Alright, pretty high toughness. And scales with the amount of colorless creatures our opponent has. So cards like Pia and Kiran Alar are likely to be in our opponent's deck. And that being said, we drew another Thrall, so let's for sure attack with the Welkin turn here, and then I think we just play Flashback, and I think we sacrifice our Perilous Mirror taking out the Slide Runner, could also sacrifice the Welkin turn I guess, but that doesn't sound great. Yeah, let's go for it. Opponent likely sacrifices a Crawler here. So, sacrifice Perilous Mirror. Either way, these two are gonna be dead by the end of the turn. So we can deal two to the Crawler. And the aggregates only have 1-5 for now does have Trample, which is kind of annoying, since we have pretty low toughness creatures. And hopefully if we draw a land next turn we can uh, play Whirler Rogue, or maybe Thrall plus Shadows, or double Thrall even. Otherwise we're stuck just playing one card. But Welkin Turn's doing a pretty good job attacking for two every turn. 
Hopefully our opponent doesn't have a Twin Bolt to kill both of our creatures. So let's see if our opponent wants to attack. He does. Mm, maybe. So he does need to have a way to block our flashback, otherwise he's trading 1 damage for 3 damage, which doesn't sound great. Just place a Glory Chaser. And passes, alright. So let's just attack with Welkin turn, see if your opponent has removal. Doesn't look like it, so it takes two. And I think we just play the Sky Spawner here. As it's the most mana efficient play. And provides lots of blockers for our opponent's creatures. Also another flyer that can start attacking. Fifth land for the opponent. And plays a Dust Stalker. That's a pretty good one. So haste and if he has another colorless creature he can stay in play otherwise he has to return it at the end of turn. So this seems like a pretty easy block. Opponent could have a pump spell but that's fine. Alright let's see if this works. Nope our opponent does have titan strength to save the stalker but doesn't have trample so that's fine. Still get to trade with the Glory Chaser. Does ingest another card. Still no land is kind of a bummer. But I guess we'll just attack for 4 here. Play a Thrall which even if our opponent has a removal spell we'll be able to provide a blocker for the Stalker. And then uh, I think we're winning the race here with our flyers. Alright, that's pretty annoying. Our opponent gaining menace here. So we can't block our opponent's creatures, we take 7 down to 7. Kind of a strange combination here of Ingest, the Void, Landfall, Renown, now Rally and Allies. So kind of a mixed bag, but it seems to be working for our opponent. So now we have to be a little careful that we just don't die next turn. Um, I think we keep attacking with our Flyers though. And then we can just play something like a Gravelade Marauder. I don't think we attack with the Thrall here. So the Graveblade can uh, trade with either of the opponent's creatures. Should our opponent have another ally we can at least double block the Stalker. So we're still not dead. And otherwise we can just block here and then block there and be in pretty good shape. A fourth land would probably help, but we're still trucking along. Meanwhile our opponent probably has more lands than he needs, so I think we lose to a card like Exquisite Firecraft no matter what here unless we make some weird blocks. I mean we can block the 5 powered creature, alright our opponent does have a firecraft, decides to kill the marauder, alright so now we are forced to jump the stalker but we still take 4 Yeah, this is kind of a force block. So our opponent would go down to one here. 
Also ingest another card. Land is good. So how many creatures in a graveyard? Four. So we would be able to activate this next turn. We have five mana available. So probably the best play is just Whirler Rogue. And then the question is, how many creatures do we attack with? Just the Vulcan turn or both flyers? So, hmm, this is very, very interesting. I think the play is Whirler Rogue here. And then we just attack with two creatures. We're dead to a burn spell, but otherwise we're fine. And then we for sure win next turn. Yeah, let's just hit for four and play our rogue. And hope that's good enough. Pause the turn. Does our opponent's top deck burn? or an ally. A pump spell would maybe also kill us, since our opponent can target the Vile Aggregate. Instead it's another the Void creature, so pumps up the Vile Aggregate, but I don't think our opponent can kill us here. Tax, we just block. And then our opponent's dead on the way back. Alright, this one only has Manus with Rally. So yeah, looks like we got there. Just gotta make sure to block correctly here. So put one there. Can even trade if we want to. And just make sure not to die to this guy. Right, so we go down to one. Opponent ingests an island. All right, sweet. So now we get to untap and attack for the win. All right, let's move on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which looks acceptable. We have double Evolving Wilds to grab two islands. Meanwhile, we can play some uh, ground blockers. Not the most aggressive start. Islands is not a bad draw, so we can just Evolving Wilds for another island here. We could get a Swamp in case we draw a Despoiler of Souls that we want to play next turn, but we still have a decent turn to play anyways, and this allows us to curve out better in case we draw a 3-drop. Opponent on Shambling Vent into Evolving Wild, so could be some sort of 4 or 5 color deck. Uh, here let's just play out the Thrall since it attacks for more damage. Pause the turn. Let's see what lands our opponent gets. Forest, alright. Now we get to find out how many colors our opponent is playing. If it's a Converge deck or maybe just an Obzon colored deck. Alright, Gatecreeper Vine keeping the suspense. And, alright, Ors of Guildgate, so no islands or mountains to be seen, so most likely just Abs uncolored. Meanwhile, we keep drawing lands, which I guess we have a 5 drop, so it's not the end of the world. Can just attack for 2 and play out Perilous Mirror. And I guess we'll play the Evolving Wilds to thin out our deck a little bit. Doesn't make a huge difference, but we have all the lands we need. And I guess we'll grab another swamp or maybe another island in case our opponent 
place the land destruction spell. So we still have double blue for the rogue. Alright, another tap land. So off to a pretty slow start over there. Still can't activate the shambling vent. Alright, crew revival's not bad. Let's... I should have played the rogue before attacking to make the Peril Smear unblockable. So now we miss out on one point of damage. Um, most likely, unless our opponent... Yeah, alright, he does block. But has tandem tactics. Alright, so plus one, plus two, gains two life. And we'll deal two damage to our opponent. I kind of don't mind our opponent playing that card. But yeah, we should have just made the Peril Smear unblockable. And that would have been better. Let's see if our opponent maybe has a sweeper here. If he has a languish, at least we still get a scion token. And then we can follow it up with the priest. Well, Reclamation Sage will take out a Thopter. So the mix of lands is interesting here because the guild gates don't really synergize with the new lands from Battle for Zendikar since those require basics. So I think the mix of lands here is a bit questionable. Uh, we draw Vampiric Rites, which is nice. So let's attack. I don't mind trading here. And then we can play the Priest. If we're worried about a Sweeper, we can just play Vampiric Rites and pass. But I think if our opponent had a Sweeper, he would have played it last turn. Unless maybe it's the 5 mana Sweeper. In which case, playing the Vampiric Rites would be a lot better. Also don't have any zombies we can get back with Revival yet. I think if our opponent had a Sweeper, he would have blocked with a Gate Creeper Vine to just prevent 2 damage, so I don't think our opponent has a Sweeper. So let's just play out a Priest here and try and close out the game as quickly as possible. He might maybe have an Evolutionary Leap he wants to use on the Gate Creeper Vine or thinks he can prevent more damage in the future. Land into Woodland Bellower, alright. Well, let's see what it gets, could be another Reclamation Sage to kill the Thopter. Yep. Alright, our opponent got pretty good value out of those. We lose two to the Priest. So... Um, yeah, let's play Perilous Mirror. Then we can play the rights and still sacrifice a creature. We could sacrifice a priest end of turn or maybe block and then sacrifice. Interesting here that we can also sacrifice a thrall to get a scion for an additional mana. But either way, I think we start by attacking for 5 here. Uh, we could send in the Priest, but I think I want to keep it as a blocker for the Bellower. So let's play the Rites. Play out the Mirror. And make sure to keep Black Mana up. And pause the turn, and then we can block the Bellower and sacrifice the creature that's blocking to the right. So ground creatures are not going to be a huge problem for us. Nissa, however, is kind of annoying because now our demon has to kill the Nissa. Unless we want to just try and kill the opponents quickly. Alright, Nissa Sage Animist, most likely gonna draw our opponent a card. 
Languish, alright, that's good to know about. Doesn't kill the demon, and if your opponent plays it, the mirror can take down the bellower with it. So actually, Languish not that bad for us. All things considered, can also sacrifice the Thrall to the right, and then still have enough mana to sac uh, sacrifice another creature to the right. So I don't think we'll see our opponent play Languish here. At least he'll be attacking first. Which is actually interesting, because we're inclined to want to sacrifice the Priest first, but if we do that, we don't get the Scion token to sacrifice a second creature. So actually I think it might be better to block with the Thrall first. So we still have the option of using the rights a second time. So our opponent thinking decides to activate the Shambling Vents, but we can simply block it and then sacrifice the creature to prevent a life gain. So that's not gonna work out for our opponent. So let's see, I think we block here. Uh, yep. Yeah. And then sacrifice the carrier thrall. Opponent doesn't gain any life. We gain one and draw a card. And let's see, can we kill our opponent here? We just need to get in for one damage on the ground and then sacrifice our mirror. So, yeah, we just play Crew Revival here on the Bellower. Attack our opponent with everyone. At least takes one and then we sacrifice the mirror to kill our opponent. I think this is gonna work, yep. So had we sacrificed the priest, our opponent could still survive here. So that's fine. And then we can use the vampiric rites to sacrifice the mirror to kill our opponent. So we make sure that he doesn't gain any life with shambling vents next turn. All right, sweet. Let's move on to the next one. Let's take a look at our opening hand, which is pretty interesting here. We have a Despoiler, two Husks. Not the best draw, but I think it's still keepable. So we have two Evolving Wilds and a Despoiler we want to play next turn. So I think Let's see. So we do want to have double blue at some point for Whirler Rogue, but I think it might actually be better to use Evolving Wilds grabbing Swamp here. So that we use one of our tap lands and next turn can still play the Despoiler. And then hopefully we don't draw Whirler Rogue before we find a double a second blue source. I think that makes sense. So grab a Swamp and pause the turn. Opponent on Mountain. Into Island, into Alchemist File. So could be on a Blue-Red Artifact deck here. Sunken Hollow, alright. So there's our double blue source. And next turn we can play Husk. And then uh, maybe a second Husk or a Mir. Likely has a removal spell for the Spoiler, but does not have a third land. Alright. Let's go ahead and attack. Likely gets killed here. Yep, there's a Twin Bolt. 
and let's go ahead and play a husk. And pause the turn. Abomination is also nice, but I think we want to play the mirror before. So we could just sacrifice the husk to itself. Doesn't matter here. But there are scenarios where you want to do that. For example, if your opponent tries to exile the husk. Still no third land for our opponent, but our hand is kind of clunky in a way. Because we don't want to play the Abomination without any creatures in play. Husk doesn't have anything that can really get sacrificed to it. So, it's either another husk here, or we just play Perilous Mirror. I think husk is fine, because then next turn we can play Perilous Mirror into Flashbag. And here we can just play Island, or get an Island, rather. Pause the turn, see if our opponent has a third removal spell. Or if he finally draws a third land, he does. And another vial, so could also have a fiery impulse in hand. Or maybe wants to make sure that he keeps hitting land drops. No, he does have another impulse. Alright, hopefully that means our abomination will survive. Alright, Sky Spawner is a good draw, so now we can play Sky Spawner, play Perilous Mirror. We can also return the Despoiler to the battlefield, and we can do that at instant speed. I kinda don't hate that, so we can play the Sky Spawner, and then return this end of turn. And then next turn we can still play these two or the Abomination. Yeah. Seems fine. Pause the turn here. Opponent can also use the Vials at some point to prevent us from attacking. So... Our opponent can't play Whirler Rogue, but could play Pia and Kirin. Instead, plays the uh, Artificer with two artifacts in place so can shoot down the Sky Spawner, which is fine. So, tax for two, also fine. And now we can return the Despoiler, and I think we want to leave a husk in the graveyard since it's a zombie for crew revival purposes. So now we finally get to attack for 4, and then we get to decide what we want to play beside it. Priest is a pretty good one, since then we can follow it up with either Flashback or Abomination, sacrificing the Priest. And also puts a lot of pressure on the opponent. So if our opponent attacks for 2 here, do we block with the Priest? I don't think we do. Another Vile, alright. Tapping his blue mana. Certainly not blocking with the Demon, since a burn spell could then finish off the Demon. But yeah, our opponent has lots of Vials to stop the Demon from attacking but we don't really mind. Uses a Vial to prevent it from blocking. And attacks for two. Alright, so that tells me our opponent doesn't have a burn spell to finish off the demon. Still gonna take it here. Since we don't mind the two damage. Opponent left, alright. Lose two to the demon, or the priest. And now we get to decide what we want to do. 
So we can play Abomination this turn, as well as Perilous Mirror. We would still take two from the Priest, but then we get rid of it on our next upkeep. Could also play Flashback, sacrificing the Priest. We can even play the Abomination and then play Flashback, sacrificing Eldrazi, Scion, sacrificing the Priest to draw two cards. That sounds pretty sweet. So that means we start by attacking here. So our Scion gets in for one. Fiery Impulse is gonna kill the Despoiler. Now we get to play the Abomination and play the Marauder, draw a card from sacrificing the Scion and draw a card from sacrificing the Priest. Alright, not bad. Warlord Rogue, a good draw. Opponent finally found double blue, so maybe he has Warlord Rogue he wants to play. Nope. Instead it's a Firecraft. Killing the... Flashback. So now we sacrifice the Abomination. Let's attack with our Demon which will not get to attack, so we'll just have to play a Whirler Rogue and plan on returning the Despoiler at the end of turn. Could also play the Shadows, which has a bunch of creatures in a graveyard. Um, sure. Let's do this. Our opponent is dead on board anyways, so maybe the scries can help us find some more relevant cards if our opponent does play a removal spell. Just plays a chief, which is not a problem. Alright, so lots of options here. Uh, I think we can just attack for 7 in the air and then activate the shadows. Alright, never mind, our opponent still had a vial. In which case, we just attack for two. Could have attacked for four, used a crew revival. Um, let's see. Then our opponent would be at four. Perilous Mirror, two. Yeah, I don't think we can kill our opponent this turn anyways. So uh, let's just play the Mirror. And pause a turn. We can still return the the spoiler, or we can uh, activate the shadows. All right, that's fine. So let's activate this. Opponent loses two, we gain two. And then we can just use Rogue's Passage on our Demon Token to attack for the win. There's nothing for double red our opponent can do about it. Alright. Sweet. I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day.